Welcome Northeast Conference fans to our latest NEC Now podcast on the NEC Overtime Pod. Today, I'm joined by Sacred Hearts women's lacrosse player, Michaela Egret, and football player, Miles Talley, to discuss how they speak up for social change within their community as a part of the conference's NEC Speaks Up initiative. Miles and Michaela founded Every Heart is Sacred, a group dedicated to promoting diversity and inclusion on Sacred Hearts campus. Thank you both for speaking with me today. No of course. To get started, Michaela, why don't you tell us a little bit about your athletic career and how it brought you to SHU? Um, so I actually played soccer and basketball for most of my life as well. And lacrosse was kind of the last sport I played and I just found a love in it. So I decided to continue on to college and I chose Sacred Heart because just the atmosphere of the campus was very bright and positive. So um, I joined the team here and I've been here for um, two years now. I mean, with COVID, it was a little different, but um, <laughs> two years and then this year I'm a junior. So. That's awesome. And Miles, can you share how you got to Sacred Heart as well? Um, yes. So basically, uh, I had a few options in the Northeastern Conference division. And uh, I came to Sacred Heart and I fell in love. Uh, it, was a, it was a campus that really caught my attention, coaches and the atmosphere, everybody around me. Just it felt like home. So um, it's just it felt like the place I wanted to be. And it's just been proven for the three years that I've been here. That's great. And can the two of you tell me a little bit about what is Every Heart is Sacred? Um, so I'd say Every Heart is Sacred is kind of our group that we made because in COVID, um, when we were in the um, prime of the pandemic and we were all stuck in our houses, like we kind of realized like there's not really something at our school for that, um, especially in athletics. And with being an athlete, we have a platform to kind of speak about this so we created this group to help all social justices and any ism so any um person who is underrepresented or um undervalued we want to be a space where they can come to and we can speak for them or speak with them and give them a place to feel seen and welcomed yeah kind of building off of that um so we created this group around the time of the death of uh, george floyd um and we kind of felt like came together and felt like enough is enough in a way, like these things should not be happening. And we felt as though we had the opportunity and the platform to kind of change that in a way, to kind of spread awareness to our, our campus and even throughout the NEC because we have uh, other teams and, and organizations kind of uh, hopping along on board with the things that we're doing. So it's just great to know that we kind of have uh, the support and, you know, knowledge of people who also want to have uh, change in the world just like us so yeah. and last year like you just said the black lives matter movement influenced many to take action in the realm of social justice and the three of us have kind of talked previously about how you started as student athletes to use your platform to advocate for lasting social change how has every heart is sacred influenced the way that you use your platforms um now uh, I usually use it as a way for like information of things that I see. Uh, so I follow a lot of accounts about like uh, mental health, uh, like Black Lives Matter movements, things of that nature. So I usually post things or or like share things with my friends and even family to kind of, you know, just boost a little bit of their knowledge, even myself, even knowledge within myself to kind of, um, you know, help spread that awareness that we were uh, looking to aim for in this group. Yeah, um, adding to that, I'd say I think one of the biggest things about our group is that we really want to promote change and um, like growth is the main thing. And that, like, you know, even if we just help one person kind of see something bigger than themselves and that like they can help people in small ways, um, that's kind of our main point And that's like something that's a great takeaway. So I think I've learned that like using my platform is just even just like conversations with people. And I, like, it doesn't mean I have to make this huge, big change because even small little changes can be like great to make those big changes in long term and like changing one person's view or um, making them see that something matters or they matter in a way they hadn't seen before is a like big triumph. So I think like just using your platform on like the small day to day basis is also really important for us. And you both kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but what inspired you to start this group? Uh, for me, um, like we were saying, like I was saying earlier with the death of George Floyd, like just 
kind of feeling like, you know, that could have been anybody. Like, you know, looking at my skin color and my my like background, it's it's kind of um disheartening to see something happen like that to someone who looks like you and and I potentially could honestly be you in any any form. But uh we also looking at that wanted to go in a very broad aspect of everything. So we didn't just want to confine it to just Black Lives Matter and just, you know, that kind of movement. We wanted to spread it with everything like Asian hate, uh we mental health awareness, uh, Pacific Islander awareness, all that stuff. So I feel like, you know, with that, it opened up new doors and new like opportunities to kind of look through everything else that we may not have been educated with uh, and and kind of run with that. Yeah, um, I'd also say, I think we both came from high schools where they had had um, groups such as this. So we wanted to definitely bring that into our school and, we were like, oh, is there a group? And we kind of looked into it and we realized there wasn't. So we thought it was like a really great opportunity to kind of make a stance for ourselves and the school and our teammates and all the other people who could join us on this movement. And um, so I'd say that was a big thing. And I'd also say just like, as I said before, kind of celebrating people's individualities and their um, kind of who they are it was really important to us and I think like we see you know as women we're undervalued or as um for the Black Lives Matter you know they're not fully valued and it comes to like how can we make a change for that and how can we help and I think as I said you know making these small differences can turn bigger and hopefully that can continue into our lives and for Sacred Heart. And since starting Every Heart is Sacred what kinds of changes have you seen on your campus? with everything, like when we first started with COVID and everything, it's a little difficult to kind of get everything going because, you know, getting people's attention on Zoom, you know, with the classes and everything too. It was hard, but uh, this year has been a little bit different. Uh, we're making small changes, small changes, but small changes are good, but it's nothing. But um, to our campus, we, we see, I'm sure Michaela can vouch for this, like some of my team has been coming to me uh, asking how they can support, uh, what they need to know or, or things of that nature, like what to say and what, even yet, like I was saying, even things like what to say and what not to say to specific people and how to address them. Um, so it's kind of good to see that through this group, we have people coming to us who are like, we're usually like seeming seemingly uncomfortable, but they're kind of comfortable and coming out of their shelves and then coming to us or, or any of us and kind of talking to us and, and feeling like they can be a part of something. Yeah, um, Miles and I, we have our favorite saying is like, be comfortable with the uncomfortable. So that's like something I've seen on campus, as Miles said, like more people are kind of being willing to talk. And I think there was and still is a huge stigma on things such as Black Lives Matter, that like all these different um, things, because people don't want to step on each other people's toes. And I think um, hopefully our group will continue to be able to help people see like those conversations are good. And um even when someone doesn't necessarily agree with everything you're saying, it's good to at least have your voice and um, have it be heard. So I think that's something on campus that we are hoping continues to be seen like and held to like say what you need to say and hear people out and try to like learn and expand your knowledge. And when it comes to racial inequality, what is one thing you wish more people would speak up about? Um, I say I have I have kind of two things. So one of the things that I think is really important is that not as many people in racial inequalities kind of focus on the bigger picture of people. I think like if I'm looking at Miles, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's a black man. I have to support him. But like, I think it's more important to like, OK, what does supporting him mean? And it doesn't just mean like, you know, the what you see on media I think it's like how am I going to celebrate his culture with him how am I going to celebrate who he is with him and I think expanding knowledge in that manner is really important as well and that it's not just um just like standing by but like also celebrating the individuals for being more than an athlete or more than what we see them as and like beyond that and looking at who they are outside of sports and um among that kind of thing yeah, I don't I don't think I could say it any better than that. Michaela kind of hit home with that. So like I feel like something that should be spoke up about is like kind of what Michaela just said is how can we be celebrated and kind of getting to know the basis of a person instead of kind of like 
using stereotypes so for example I'm a football player so like not just being a football player like I'm more than just a football player like I, I have a family uh I, I'm a psychology major um things of that nature so just kind of get into the the groundwork of a person and like building up to kind of get to know them and understand them other than just being an athlete or or a comedian or an actor or an actress whatever it may be so I think that's a big thing yeah and I think then the second thing I was going to say too is that more about the racial inequality like the Black Lives Matter movement I think as an ally like the biggest thing for me and actually the biggest thing for our group, I kind of mentioned it was um, getting people to be willing to learn. And I think in this whole social justice journey, the biggest thing I've come to find out is that when people are willing to listen, that's when the change is going to be made. And like, sadly, a lot of people are kind of stuck in what they know just as like a defense mechanism. And I think um, within this, within the racial inequalities, a way to make a change is like, you know, being willing to hear someone's story or hear who they are and like see them. And that kind of opens people's hearts to all the racial inequalities and seeing beyond just what the TV shows us or social media. And do you feel like since starting this group and with the people that come to your meetings, do you see those changes being implemented or do you think like there's still a lot more to learn and grow. I mean, as time changes and as people change, like obviously it's not going to happen overnight, but do you see like a positive impact from this group? Yeah, I, I would say yes. I think um, as Miles said, we've had kind of trouble actually starting this group mainly because last year was all on Zoom. Um, this year, luckily we've been able to kind of go a little further. We had a, a one meeting, but it wasn't, um, as big of a turnout as like we wanted of course no first meeting is but um I think like as we said we're, we've been able to connect with individuals and on an individual basis I think even just between me and Miles I, I think we've had conversations where he sees you know being a woman athlete how that is totally different than being a male athlete and um, as I said like changing those individual minds and opening them to the struggles of other people helps you kind of see the bigger picture. So I think this at, at upcoming um, semester, we're trying to get reps from each team and um, things like that so that we can kind of hit home to a lot of different teams, not just our two teams. Or um, I think uh, like we have like, we had good support at the meeting, but not like every team was there. And so we're hoping like expanding to more teams will help us get that bigger crowd that we want and kind of have the whole school of or the whole um yes the whole athletics kind of jump on board with us rather than just kind of smaller groups yeah so kind of like what Michaela was saying it's, it was obviously pretty difficult uh, but I would like to also say that there has been some small changes and changes in general that we've seen um just in the people coming I would say that have attended our meetings uh, I feel like it, it kind of like shows that they care in a way. And I kind of, I would hope that it uh, touched their hearts a little bit in the sense that they kind of got something out of it, a little bit of knowledge, uh, a little bit of empathy that they may have like lacked before. Uh, and kind of like what I was saying, like I've had some of my teammates come to me asking me questions. I'm sure Michaela can say the same thing. Uh, people from other teams actually too. Um, so I would say, yeah, uh, small changes, but, uh, small changes or small steps lead to bigger steps. So we're just looking forward to, like Michaela said, uh, going into next semester and kind of getting the ball rolling even more. And my last question for you is that as founders of this group, after you graduate, I know you both still have another year at least. What is your hope for Every Heart is Sacred? Um, for me, it's just to carry on that whole legacy of it. Like, uh, I think the problem that me and Michaela have talked about is like kind of like with Black Lives Matter, like you don't really hear anything about it anymore. Like it kind of dies out. So like with this, you don't, it, it dies out until something else happens. Like, and not like you'll see another death or like uh, some, 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 something happened. Uh, and then it starts to get back going. Like with, with us, we want to kind of have a consistency going. And like when we leave, we want to know or be able to have uh, kind of like, knowledge that this is something that's going to continue to go out through the campus for 
a very long time. So that's the the goal for me and I'm sure Michaela when we graduate. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think, as Miles said, like things die out and then it's kind of until something happens again, then people remember it. And I think that's exactly why we created this because we didn't want it to just be oh, right now people care. So we want it to be people care all the time and people are kind of making a change until equality is there for all different people. So I think for our our hope for it is that it continues when we're gone and like even we can give back or help um, in any way we can, that would be our goal. Miles, you had kind of just mentioned this, but as these trends, and it's sad because these are looked at as trends on social Mm -hmm. media like Mm -hmm. on your platforms I mean how do you continue to speak Mm -hmm. about them when people seem to not really care as much as they do I mean you're right like as soon as this story is over and now we're done we're gonna wait until the next story comes out and it might not even make like national news I mean the only reason why the Black Lives Matter movement was so huge last year was because it was a national case Mm -hmm. and there are so many small cases that are happening on a daily basis that just get overlooked unless it's constantly talked about in your community. So how will you use your platforms to continue to speak up even when it doesn't seem like people are paying attention? I would say kind of like the question we talked about earlier, like using our platforms, I would say the power of the share button is very, uh, very significant. Like um, you can send something to like a group chat or even individual friends just to kind of pick their brains and just allow them to think and kind of dwell on the things that they may not have known or, or thought about before. And I feel like that is something that has like a huge impact um, on the mind and like on the body and soul to kind of keep them in the loop with everything. In a sense, like they don't forget, like we were just talking about, and they, they are up to date. Um, they have knowledge, they're more knowledgeable than others. And even through them, they can also hit that share button too. So like things spread, like you were saying, uh, it spreads and, and the chain reaction of the share button is powerful. And um, I know it starts with just one person and then it trickles down to a whole bunch of other people. So uh, using your platform, uh, sharing things, talking about things, having conversations is something to kind of keep things up to date and keep things up to track. Yeah, I think also another thing Miles and I have learned um, just through this group is, you know, like a lot of things are trending and then they go away, but also a lot of things are negative. So I th- and they're reactive. Everything we see kind of in Black Lives Matter is a reactive um, movement. And I think we can only do so much within our school, but it can go so far. And so, as I said before, you know, valuing people as individuals, I think, is something that was that is really important to us because that's what then changes like those people like you value those individual stories that as you said like there's so many small things a day that you don't hear about um and so valuing those individuals then allows you to kind of see those small stories more and um realize you know this is bigger than just those instances we saw in the summer or you know that we see on the news because it happens to people we love people we play with um all this stuff so I think that is like really important to see that it's like as Miles said it's more than what we're seeing but it's also kind of like easy to get caught up in the negative so focus on that like loving who you can and around you and supporting them that's great Well, thank you so much, both of you, for speaking with me on this today. I mean, it's an important conversation, and I think everyone should take away the get comfortable being uncomfortable from this. Um, I think it's never going to go away, and the more that you use your platform, the more uncomfortable you might make people, but that is a form of learning. So thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you.